Nasser Al Khalili is a professor of Islamic art history at England's Oxford University. He also has the world's largest personal art collection and is showcasing 500 objects from his Islamic art collection in Abu Dhabi. Ibrahim, please tell us more. That's right, Khalid. He has a larger art collection than even Queen Elizabeth. Professor Khalili says that he's bringing the objects to our attention to illustrate not only the beauty of Islamic art, but also to the degree to which it and the society that produced it have enriched the world as we know it. This is the first time the Khalili collection has come to the Middle East, and many of the objects on display have never been shown before. These 500 pieces were specifically chosen to illustrate the development of this rich artistic heritage over a period of some 1,400 years, from its beginnings in the early 7th century. The objects on display cover a geographic span extending from China in the east to Spain in the west, and from the Central Asian steppes in the north to Africa in the south. Subjects include religion, science, poetry, literature, calligraphy, painting, and architecture. When the Islam uh, came to the to the uh, to to the uh, came from the Arab country toward the all the whole world, uh, each of these countries has uh, has it, it, its art, like like its art. But what what the Islam did is like he he, he did gave his effects on these arts. So it's like united these arts in uh, in one sentence, which is Islam. This is an old sitara, the curtain that covers the door to the Kaaba, also known as the Burqa. The basic design of the sitara has changed little over the centuries, with Quranic verses playing the most prominent role in its decoration. Since Mamluk times, sitaras were made in Egypt and left Cairo with the caravan of pilgrims amidst great pomp and circumstance. The revival of classical learning in 9th century Baghdad laid the basis of Arabic scientific discoveries, especially in mathematics, astronomy and trigonometry. The period 950 to 1150 marks the pinnacle of Islamic science in the East. During this period, scientific learning advanced to a degree that was only surpassed in post-Renaissance and Enlightenment Europe. The need to determine the right orientation of Mecca as well as the exact times of the daily prayers led to the development of several scientific instruments, such as the Qibla compass and this astrolabe. The astrolabe was the principal Islamic instrument for telling the time, surveying and determining latitude. By the late 9th century, it was used throughout the Islamic world, from Spain to India, and later reached Christian Europe. This is horse armor from 15th century India. The chamfron is embossed on the forehead with a teardrop shape, terminating in the palmets and stylized brows above the eye holes. It's a cultural, uh, educative uh, purpose in this exhibition. Uh, Professor Khalil wanted to share his uh, pieces with the whole world. For example, this exhibition used to be in Australia, and for the very first time, it's here in the Middle East, it's here in Abu Dhabi, in the city of Abu Dhabi. So he wanted to share his uh, piece, art pieces with the whole world in education and uh, cultural purpose. And this painting of Mecca is the earliest known accurate eyewitness record of the city. The grandson of the court painter to the Mughal ruler, Bahadur Shah II, was commissioned by the Sharif of Mecca to depict the sacred monuments of his realm in the second quarter of the 19th century. We couldn't fit all 500 pieces in the report, but if you're interested, the exhibition will be open to visitors at Emirates Palace until the 22nd of April. Back to you, Khalid. A must-see for all art fanatics. Thank you, Ibrahim.